Hello everyone, so today we're going to be doing my manga haul for the past however many months it's been since my last one. I think it's been two months or so. Now this is not going to be all of the manga I got in the last few months, just the highlights. I don't need to talk about all of my pre-orders that I get every month, every other month. I'll just talk about the most exciting releases and some of the new stuff I got recently. So I will start with some continuing series, but just the most interesting ones, I would say. So the first one is Welcome Back Alice, Volume 5. I know a lot of people are not enjoying this series as much as Shuzo Oshimi's other works, but I find this one very interesting to read. I haven't yet read this volume, but I will soon. I might save it for October, we'll see, but I have been enjoying the series as much as you can enjoy it. I think it's very thought-provoking, so I'm interested to see what happens in this volume. I know this series has now ended, I think at seven volumes, so I'm looking forward to the ending of the series as well. And the next volume I got was A Bride Story, Volume 14. I'm not sure how frequently these volumes release since I did just recently start collecting it again, so this might be the last volume for a while, but I have been enjoying the series recently and I'm excited to get into this volume as well. Next, honestly, I wasn't even gonna talk about this volume, but this cover is so beautiful that I feel like I had to include it in this haul, but that is Shonen Note Volume 5. All of these covers for this manga are just beautiful and very colorful and I really like very obnoxiously colorful covers on manga. This series, I'm waiting until all eight volumes are out to read it. I have read the first volume and I enjoyed it. This is a music manga, if you couldn't tell. I have read two of this author's works before. One of them I really enjoyed. One of them I did not enjoy at all. I'm pretty sure I will continue to enjoy this series once it's completed, but for now I'm waiting. Next we have a manga I already talked about recently, but I thought I'd include it in this haul anyway, and that is Land of the Lustrous Volume 12. This is another series where the releases are incredibly slow, so I have no idea when the next volume of this is going to come out. I might wait until the series is completed to read any more of it because as I mentioned in my August Reads video, volume 12 is a good stopping point, so I'll probably just wait until the series is completed and then read it all again, probably. But this series is really amazing and unique, and if you want to know what it's about, go watch my last video because it's very complicated and I don't want to explain it again, but it's very good. Next I have Don't Call It Mystery, Omnibus 2, or volume 3 and 4. I very much enjoyed the first volume of this. I have not read this volume yet, but as soon as I'm done reading Yomushi Petal, all of these other volumes that I picked up, I will read, but I am looking forward to reading it as soon as possible. Speaking of Yomushi Petal, I got the most recent volume with Omnibus 23. I'm currently on volume 10 or Omnibus 10, and I'm having a fantastic time with this. Honestly, reading a sports manga for the first time it's just a magical feeling for me, and so that's what I'm dealing with with the Gomushi Petal, having a great time with it. It's very ridiculous and over the top, but I'm having a lot of fun. Next we have a bunch of Volume 1s, so new series that recently released that I picked up and want to try out. I'll probably have another Try a Volume video in October, because I have some spooky reads on the list I want to try. But the first Volume 1 I have is Toj Oni, maybe. I don't know how to pronounce that. I should look it up. This seems to be a fantasy series. I've heard pretty good reviews for the first volume. I had it on my radar, but I wasn't sure I was going to pick it up. But since I have heard so many people like this first volume, I'll definitely give it a try. Look at this moth lady on the back. I like that. That's interesting. Next, I have The Darwin Incident, Volume 1. This is one of those series where I heard something about it like a year ago or something when it was announced. And that made me want to pick it up, and then I promptly forgot what got me interested in it in the first place, but I saw it was released, and I picked it up. And I have heard generally good reviews about this first volume, so I will give it a try and let you know what I think of it. Next I have volumes 1 and volume 2 of Soloist in a Cage. This is one I wasn't going to pick up because I know it's available on the Manga Plus app to read for free, so I was going to read it there before I picked it up. But since it is only three volumes and I saw it's kind of a post-apocalyptic action manga, I just went ahead and purchased it. And once the third volume is out, I'll just read the whole thing. I have been trying to kind of steer clear of these really short series because usually they're not incredibly memorable to me, but this one seems interesting enough for me to purchase it. The next volume I got is Glitch Volume 1. This, I can't remember if this is completed in a short series or if it's still ongoing, I'm not sure 
but I believe this is a mystery manga with some weird, maybe paranormal elements. I'm not sure. I saw some pictures on Instagram of this series and it just seemed kind of weird and I like weird manga. So that's why I picked it up. I've also heard pretty good things about this author's other works. So I'm very eager to get to this one. This one I'll also try in another try a volume video and I'll let you know what I think of it. The next volume I got is Cat-Eyed Boy Volume 1 by Kazuo Omez. This is a re-release from Viz. They have previously published this in a paperback format. Honestly, I think this cover and this design of the book looks way better than that first one, even though I do like the blue and pink on the first one. This just goes along a lot better with the other new releases from this author. So I'm very happy to have this. I'm pretty sure it's complete at two volumes. I was thinking about just waiting until it's all out, but I'll probably just read this one since usually Kazuo Omez is pretty episodic, but I'm definitely looking forward to this. Anytime you combine cats and horror manga, I almost always enjoy it. And the last volume for this section is one of my most anticipated releases of the year. And that is, I don't know how to pronounce the title. Hashtag Dracula, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I don't wanna call it DRCL because that's very clunky. So I'll just call it Hashtag Dracula. But the subtitle is Midnight Children. This is based on Dracula, which is one of my favorite classic novels. I love Dracula. I have taken a little bit of a peek into this volume. I'm trying to wait until October to read it, but I couldn't stop myself from taking a peek at the art. It's creepy. It's very realistic. If you couldn't tell from the cover, Shinichi Sakamoto definitely has a very realistic art style, very highly detailed, and I could totally see that in the art. And that means whenever there's a creepy scene, it is way creepier. So I'm definitely looking forward to this. I'm going to try my hardest to wait until October to read it. Hopefully I succeed. This next section is from authors that I have been enjoying so far this year, and I picked up a couple of their other releases that are not as easily available, I would say. So the first one is Garden Dreams by Fumi Yoshinaga. I don't really know what this is about, but because I have been enjoying Fumi Yoshinaga's works so much the last year or two, I definitely wanted to pick up some more of her work. So I picked up this one and I also picked up All My Darling Daughters. This one has actually been on my radar for years. And by years, I mean like five or six years. I just never picked it up. But again, I've been enjoying this author so much that I knew I wanted to pick up this release as well. This is another one shot. So that was Fumi Yoshinaga. And next we have another creator that I've enjoyed all of her works. So this first one is AA Prime by Moto Hagio. I will admit I paid over retail for this, but not an exorbitant price. I just really wanted to read this. This one seems to be more sci-fi than some of her other works. This volume itself, this book is over 25 years old and honestly it looks brand new and I just bought it used from Amazon so I had no idea what the condition was going to be besides that it said very good and definitely very good condition. So I'm very happy to have this. And the next one you've already seen because I mentioned it in my TBR video but I didn't actually haul it so I thought I'd mention it in this haul but that is The Heart of Thomas by Moto Hagio. This is a very highly sought after manga right now. It's currently out of print from Fantagraphics. Amazon has been teasing us with putting up listings of the manga at retail price and letting people order it, but not actually shipping anything out. So I did put in an order for it that obviously did not get fulfilled. But while I was doing that, at one point I saw a copy used for not an extreme price. Again, I will admit I paid over retail for this, but I didn't pay $300 or anywhere close to that. So I'm pretty happy with this purchase. And I did already read this, I really enjoyed it, but I'll talk about it more at the end of the month in my wrap up. This next section I would say is from smaller publishers. So the first volume I have to talk about in this section is Okinawa. This is published by Fanographic Books. This is in a very nice hardcover. It's pretty small, but I don't mind small books. But this manga is about Okinawa in Japan and kind of its history with war. And I think it's a collection of stories about that. I could be wrong about that detail, but I've heard good things about this. Generally, it is, seems to be very highly acclaimed. So I'll let you know what I think of it when I read it. Next, I think these are the first books I've ever bought from this publisher. I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. But that publisher is Glacier Bay and I got Gleolia, I think that's how you pronounce it, volume one and volume three. Currently volume two is not readily available, but the publisher is kind of 
gauging some interest to see if they will reprint the second volume. So if they do decide to reprint the second volume, I will pick up that one as well. This first volume is a re-release, so that one was reprinted recently. But either way, I think this is a collection of short stories, so it doesn't really require me to have the second volume to read it and enjoy it. But I've heard amazing things about this collection, so I definitely wanted to pick it up. I've heard it's a must read so I'm going to read it. And I do like looking into smaller publishers and seeing what they're releasing. So I don't know when I will get to reading this, but I'm very happy to have these volumes. Next, I have Dementia 21, the box set. This is also published by Fantagraphics Books. I completely forgot to talk about this in my August Reads video, but I did read this in August. I loved it. What a fantastic satire manga. This is about a home care worker who deals in elderly care and the kind of weird, very weird situations she deals with. I found this manga very funny. It is a great satire. There seems to be some commentary on kind of population crisis in Japan, the aging population, stuff like that. And this manga was a great read. I can't believe I forgot to talk about it in my August Reads video, but just know that I loved it. And the last manga I have to talk about is a complete series. It is a box set. I never really expected to buy this, but recently I read a manga by this author and I enjoyed it a lot and I wanted to see what this series was about since it is one of their most popular series I would say or most highly acclaimed. But that is the Buddha box set by Osamu Tezuka. There I put the camera down a little bit so you could see it better but I did recently finish Ode to Kirihito and I really enjoyed that one. So I went ahead and bought the Buddha box set. One thing I wanna talk about with this release, as you can see at the bottom, this is published by HarperCollins. There is a vertical release. Those books, they're definitely thicker. I think they're taller as well. The pages in these volumes are very thin, as you can see. You can see the art on the other side, but they're very floppy, which I like. So if that's going to bother you, don't pick up this release. Honestly, I don't really care about that too much. As long as it's easy to read, then it doesn't bother me. From what I can tell, it does have the same translation as the vertical release. In the printing information on these releases, you can see that the translation is by vertical, so I assume it's the same translation as the vertical release. But there is no box set for the vertical release, and this one was pretty cheap. So if you're someone who needs like the highest quality of release, of a manga, definitely don't buy this box set. Go for the vertical release, I would say. But again, I'm not bothered by it. So I went ahead and picked this up. I'm just making the thumbnail for this video. And one thing I forgot to mention is that for some reason, on the back of this manga and all the volumes, it says for sale on the Indian subcontinent only. I do not live on the Indian subcontinent. Um, so it doesn't really matter. It's just interesting that that is the case. There's some reviews on Amazon about that. And yeah, it doesn't really mean anything. I just thought that was kind of funny. So I thought I'd mention it. I do enjoy reading classic manga a lot, actually. I like seeing where the influences come from. So I'm eager to give this a try. I'll let you know what I think of it. But either way, I'm happy to have it. Happy to have another classic manga in my collection. So that's everything I wanted to talk about from the last few months. If you've read any of these, particularly the ones in the second half of the video, please let me know your thoughts on them down below or let me know what your favorite pickup recently was. But that's gonna be it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.